Hi, everyone. Welcome to True Disabled Story. My name is Nico, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with blonde hair, large blue and brown spectacles, uh, and a white t-shirt, as well as a dark headset around my head. Uh, I'm seated against a purple wall and some bookcases. This is my home office. Like roughly 25% of Americans and about 17% of Philadelphians, I'm disabled. And whether we look locally, nationally, or even globally, disabled communities are full of dynamic, diverse, and frankly delightful people with their own stories to tell. All we have to do is listen. As many of you know, I was born with my disability. I've never known uh, any anything different, I guess. Uh, so I'm always curious uh, about the disabled journeys of others. Uh, I'm lucky to be joined tonight by my friend and colleague, Natalie, and I can't wait to hear uh, what she has to say. Hi, Natalie, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so what, what was your path to diagnosis like? Was this a uh, surprise to you and your family? Uh, or was it something you were actively pursuing? Uh, tell us that story. Yeah, so I have spina bifida, so I was born with it. Um, and I will say that it was a shock, I think, for my parents. I am the oldest, um, so I was the firstborn. And they had no idea up until, I think, about two weeks before I was born that something something was wrong. Um, and they didn't even know that it was the spine of it, but I think that first they saw that I was breached. So my head was, or my feet were down first, um, which isn't, isn't good. And so they picked that up on like an ultrasound or something. And then, um, when I was born, I was born via C-section because then they saw like, oh, she has hydrocephalus, she has water on the brain, um, she might have spina bifida or feet are clubbed. So it was all a lot of information that my parents were taking in within a very short period of time. Um, so it was a shock for them. And like you said, like I, it's all I've ever known. So it was, it's never really, a, 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 it wasn't a shock for me. It's, it's just how I've lived for 24 years. Yeah, I get you there. Uh, fantastic. Natalie, thank you so much. Uh, I, it was really fantastic getting to know more about like your family and how you're the oldest of all your siblings. That's really cool. Uh, so what impact has, uh, spina bifida, your diagnosis had on your life? You can consider this like academically, professionally, personally, whatever. Yeah, no, it, definitely affects everything. I say that um, I joke with my friends. They're like, oh, like, how do you like do everything? Like, how do you deal with everything? It's like, it's all I've ever known. It's all I've ever known how to yeah. do things. I It's just like, you know, how you drive a car as an able-bodied person. I learned how to do that differently. And it, you, you driving a car, you know, as an able-bodied person doesn't make sense to me, but driving a car as a disabled person makes sense to me. So I really just have to, had to learn how to adapt everything um and I still do that today and I do everything on my own I was raised from you know a very I come from a very loving family and I'm very lucky that my parents raised me in a way that they had me do everything on my own I you know I had to figure out how to do everything on my own because nobody's going to do anything for me. And I have to be able to know how to do things on my own for when I am, you know, independent. And now I have an apartment. I have a full-time job. I live on my own. You know, I'm very, I like to think that I'm very successful for a 24 year old. Um, that's a year post-grad. I went to college. I, I graduated college. I graduated high school. Um, and that's all from, you know, being independent and learning how to do things on my own um, and pushing myself to uh, be more independent. And um, yeah, I, like I said, I think it affects, my disability affects everything, but there's always a way around, um, 
things and I just I just do things differently that I, I don't like to think that there's anything that I can't do I just do them differently that's a really respectable mindset uh and, and you're right it's very impressive what you've accomplished at just 24 uh it's really awesome thank you so much would that then carry over into like what advice you have for other people with spina bifida? Yeah, definitely. Um, I every time that I talk to like a younger person, I say the thing the same things that I just said, where you know, do as much as you can by yourself because not everybody's going to be around to help you. You have to learn how if you want to learn if you want to live by yourself and you want to be independent, you're gonna have to pretty much suck it up and do the things that like you need to learn how to do. You need to learn how to go grocery shopping. You need to learn how to, you know, have a job. You, you just have to learn how to do things and you have to want to learn everything. Um, and it's not impossible. I'm literally talking to one of my best friends, trying to convince him to like move out on his own out of his parents' house. Yeah. And cause he, cause he thinks, to a certain point that he's not able to. And I tell him all the time, like, no, you you definitely can. Like, I think as disabled people, we're told that we can't do things. So then we automatically have that mindset of, well, you know, I can't do it. It's kind of, there's a really good commercial going around. I think it's for Special Olympics. And the premise is that, you know, it's this girl and she is told all these things. Like if you, say that I can't go to college, then I'm not going to go to college. Like if you assume that I can't drink alcohol, then I'm not going to drink alcohol. And then it looks like I can't drink alcohol. If you assume things about me and you, if you assume things about yourself, it, they're going to end up true. So you always, I, what I tell people, especially like young girls, I think it's very important to be a role model to young girls and young, you know, young women to grow up to be strong, independent women. Um, and I tell them all the time, like, you have to assume that you can do things, because if you assume that you can't do something, you're not going to do it. That's that's just how it is. Um, so I pride myself on that. There's a lot of people who look up to me. I played wheelchair basketball for 10 years, and there's a lot of young women on that team that, like, you know, it just makes me so happy every time I go back and you know, hang out with them because they're like, oh my God, I want to be like you one day. And like, I think that's just like, it's so awesome to hear that, to know that I've like, you know, made a difference in their lives, you know, um, no matter how big or small. So I always go back and I tell those people, you know, if you want to be like me one day, you have to, you have to put in the work. It's not easy, but it is possible. Absolutely. Uh, and that wheelchair basketball is really thrilling to see. Uh, thanks for the invitation to that game. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Natalie, thank you so much. I find your mindset like really inspiring. Uh, I hate to use that word, but it is yeah. it is valid here. Uh, and I also enjoyed your take on learned helplessness. That was what held me back uh, in the early 2010s when I first moved out of my parents' house. Uh, I had no idea how to uh like load the dishwasher right i had yeah. one night where i mixed up dish soap and dishwasher liquid uh yeah. so like my kitchen floor was full of bubbles i had no idea what i'd done wrong yeah uh alas i was a younger man natalie as we close our time together i want to give you a chance that we as disabled people so rarely get otherwise uh and that is a chance to really promote yourself uh brag about any recent wins you have or any recent wins you have coming up, or if you want to build community, where can people find you online? This is just free space for you to stand up on your soapbox and uh, have yourself up. Let's hear it. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram a lot. Um, that's at Nat Polander with two R's. Um, N A T K O L A N D E R R. Um, I'm usually there most of my time. Um, like I said, like I work full time. I work um at a law firm in their professional liability department. I'm a legal assistant. Um and I've just now recently be uh, become interested in going to law school. So that's like really exciting. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. Trying to study for like the LSAT very loosely. Like I can't promise anything, but I think it's just really like 
I've only worked there since September. So that's what, like nine months. Mm -hmm. And I've already just become like so interested in wanting to be um, a lawyer in the disability, um, in the disability, you know, spectrum of all of that. Yeah. Um, because we need like a lot more people that are knowledgeable um, in like ADA law and things like that, like section 504. Um, just all the disability laws, what kind of rights we have. And we need somebody, we need more people who are like well-established, not just like your average person. Cause it's good to be educated on like disability law as a disabled person. But I think we need pe more people who like have like the accreditation of, you know, your Juris doctor have went mm -hmm. to school for three years and passed the bar exam. Um <laughs> So I'm doing that and that's really exciting. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm just I'm just here and I'm just living, trying to get through. That's an ambitious goal and you're the person to meet it. Thank you so much for uh, sharing some time with us. Of course. My hat is off to you. Whatever you. you go, whatever you do, I'm rooting for you. Thank you again. Of course. Thank you.